Oh, wow, look at that shot. <laughs> Come here, sucker. I got a sledgehammer sandwich for you, dude. Yeah, this guy definitely looks a little bit different. Which zombie is that? I'm, I'm gonna have to to look in the the spawn menu to see which one that is. I don't recognize him at all. He's totally new looking. He looks like frickin' uh, Ronald McDonald. Welcome back, everybody, to Seven Days to Die. I'm an old guy gaming, and this is our first shot at Alpha 19 Experimental. Um, so, if you guys are new to watching me, um, I uh, play Seven Days to Die on the hardest settings. Uh, so we play on insane difficulty, nightmare speed, uh, and some of the other things, and we'll go through that in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, um, looking forward to doing this. I have watched a couple of other people play it over the weekend and have read through uh, the patch notes uh, for the most part. Um, I've read through all the main patch notes. I, ha I haven't read through all the updates uh, since the, the first set of patch notes came out, but you know, get, I have the basic idea of the changes in the game, and it looks like there's not a whole lot that's changed in terms of the actual gameplay itself, but there's a lot of a lot of visual graphical updates, and the quest system itself has been updated uh, with the intent to lead you uh, to all of the traders eventually if you follow it. Uh, new POIs, like over 500 POIs, and um, but, you know, improvements all across the board. So, you know, just check out the patch notes uh, if you are interested in, you know, reading those, but I'm not going to go through those here. Chances are most of you probably have already read it anyway. Okay, let's just jump right in and get going here. So we're going to do a new game. Um, let's go ahead and play on uh, the pre-gens. Uh, so we'll just start with pre-gen one. And, you know, this is going to be... So we're going to call this OG exp. exp Experimental A19. Um, yeah, so because this is experimental, of course, at any point in time, we could have to start over. And so, you know, as long as everybody understands that, which I'm sure you do, because that's how experimental works, we'll all be good. And then, of course, you know, when stable drops, um, almost certainly at that point, we will start over again um, and then, you know, stay on that build as long as we can so you know with experimental you just never know sometimes you know you can you can get a lot uh, a lot of episodes in sometimes you have to start over one or two or even three times so we'll just kind of have to play that by ear but we'll start with pre-gen one if we have to start over again the next time we'll do pre-gen two and is there a pre-gen three yeah there is okay cool so we'll start with one and then, you know, go to, go to two next and then go to three next if we have to continue starting over. Okay, let's go to uh, the settings. Um, now we are going to play on Insane. Uh, we're going to play with 90 minute days as usual. Daylight length is 18 hours. We'll keep Blood Moon frequency on seven days. Um, notice that all of the zombies are set to Nightmare Speed at all times. We'll keep the XP, XP multiplier on the normal settings. Whoops, accidentally changed that. Um, advanced settings. So... Uh, loot abundance is going to be 100%. Everything else is everything's default here. Uh, we are going to disable respawning loot. We drop everything on death. We'll keep the blood moon count at 32 enemies just so we don't tank the PC uh, during the blood moon. But 32 enemies is pretty good. Um, airdrops are on, but uh, airdrop markers are turned off. So that's pretty much the settings that I almost always use when I play Seven Days to Die. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this sucker started and see how things are going to be. Uh, I also, by the way, I also have the um, graphics set to the highest ultra settings uh, with the dynamic um, doohickey. <laughs> I can't think of what it's called, but the dynamic, you know, where it kind of adjusts things for you based upon frame rates um, on. And, you know, if, if we have performance issues, of course, we'll adjust those things as we go. Okay, I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. New loading screens here too, and you can use your mouse buttons to, you know, cycle through uh, different tips and stuff here, which is really cool. Except for, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, I was just backing it up. Yeah, that's really neat that they put that in there, uh, and the loading screen is awesome. I've seen uh, all the zombie models. I don't really like what they've done with with. Arlene, uh, also known as Little Girl Zombie. Uh, I don't like her hair, but the rest of them look pretty darn good. 
All right, so this is the same thing as always. Um, nothing's changed there. I'm sure most of you already know how that works, but basically this is just the starting quest information. Uh, so let's go ahead and get that started. I am back on the normal UI too, just because uh, I normally use the SMX HUD mod. Uh, but one of the things they added in vanilla now is if you look below my toolbar, there's a green, a small green bar to the left and a white bar, I'm sorry, a blue bar to the right. And that indicates my food and water. Uh, so now that they actually have that on the normal UI, um, we're going to go ahead and just play with that at least for our first run through. Now, one thing I see that is turned on um, is motion blur and I cannot stand motion blur. I hate it. Um, so let's go to video quality and we're going to turn that sucker off. Okay. And then, like I said, you know, if we if we notice frame issues or whatever, we'll start, you know, dumbing some of this this stuff down. Um, dynamic resolution mode is what? Wait, I thought I had that turned on. Yeah, let's turn that on. We'll try it. Um, and then if we have issues, like I said, we'll uh, we'll adjust. Now, right now, we're looking pretty good. Our frames are uh, at 60 right now. Uh, so yeah. We'll, we'll see how things go though, but yeah, it's looking looking really good. So, okay, so let's get started here. Uh, we're just gonna do the main quest as always, the starting quest. I did I turned my UI scale down a little bit too. That's something that they've added to the game. Um, I turned it down to I think 80 80 percent, which is the lowest you can turn it, uh, just so we have a little more you know screen space and that sort of thing. Uh, we're gonna keep um, this on the toolbar. No, we don't need that on the toolbar. Uh, let's keep the water. And we are going to actually make use of the land claim block probably multiple times here uh, in this this playthrough. My mouse seems to be really sensitive, so let's also go to controls here. Um, look sensitivity. Boy, that's already turned down quite a bit, isn't it? Um, let's bump it down to twenty and see how that goes. Hmm, interesting. And then, yeah, they, this is this is new too. They change kind of how you set things in the menu, which is nice. Okay, cool. All right, let's go back. That still seems a little bit hot, but we'll go with it. We'll go ahead and, and use it. All right, so let's see. The first thing we have to do is get some plant fibers and crap the bed. We shouldn't have to worry about Zeekers until... I don't know, is it like 2 o'clock in the afternoon that they start to show up? I can't remember, but we'll, we'll, we'll find out, I suppose. Assuming they haven't changed that mechanic. We're going to get a little bit of extra grass here, too, because we need to... Uh, I want to make all of the, the grass clothing, not just the two that the quest wants us to make. It just gives us a little bit better protection. All right, so let's hit some more grass while we're waiting for that. And look at that, we got our first bird's nest. Um, let's go ahead and grab that. That'll give us four feathers to start with. These little bushes here will give us wood. Yeah, it's it's looking good. It's really the environment's looking good from from here. Anyway, all right, let's place our bed roll down. And I'm going to pick that back up and and keep it on our toolbar. Is that another bird's nest or that's trash? Yeah, that's a new trash. So they've updated that. Looks really good. <laughs> Looks really good. Uh, and we can use that. Now, as I think about the changes that I, you know, as I recall them and we come across them, I'll, I'll comment on them. So one of the things that they've changed here is the sewing kits are now also used as a medical device. So you can use them to stop bleeding and also suture lacer uh, lacerations. Uh, so that's kind of cool that they, you know, increase the the usage of, of those things. This is all new too. The new uh, updated uh, trash pile looks really good. Well, it looks terrible, but it looks really good. You know what I mean, right? Okay, what do we now need to do now? We need to craft a stone axe. So um, we should be able to do that. We've hit a couple of stones and a couple of bushes. We'll put the axe here. Uh, axe looks a little bit different now. They've upgraded that. It's kind of got a little bloody texture on it, which is freaking scary and awesome at the same time. Let's craft these. And like I said, we're going to go ahead and craft all the other plant fiber items too so that we have those uh, for, for, for protection. It just knocked me off of there. So we did the gloves, the hat, um, and the shoes is what we need to do. And then we will wear these. All 
Okay, let's get some wood so we can make the club. So this quest is pretty much the same as it was in Alpha 18. No, no differences really that I can see. We'll, we'll cut this whole entire tree down just so we have a little extra wood because we're going to need it for some other things anyway. It seems like the animation for the axe swing is is a little little different than it was in 18. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like a little faster, a little more snappy. I'm not sure I like it though because, it, I don't know, it seems a little uh, snappy or jerky. I don't know. <laughs> Um, anyway, I guess I would, uh, I would trade that though, if it means, uh, it's faster. All right, we'll keep this down here for the moment, but I'm probably not going to keep it for very, very long, but they did update, you know, the club too. So this is what it looks like now. It's kind of cool. Very cool. All right. Now we need to uh, get some more stone here. It looks like, so let's see if we can find some stone nearby. We don't want to move too terribly far out of our... Uh, spawn in area or the Zekers can come in uh, sooner than they otherwise would we might as well cut this get some more wood and see if we can get some honey too whilst we're at it that'll help us with infection and we got some honey right and we also have a new uh, bird's nest with some more feathers and some eggs perfect okay stone we need stone here's a stone right here okay let's do the bow I haven't really decided yet what we're going to do in the way of a build. Um, so we'll have to kind of see see about that when the time comes. Another change that they've made is we, we once again, like before, have harvestable corpses in the game. And backpacks have been upgraded. That looks really good. Hunting knife. Okay. And some vitamins. Very nice. That's good stuff. Uh, let's yeah, let's actually get some cotton too, because uh, we can use that to uh, make ourselves a bandana. Bandana gives you um, some heat and cold protection. Didn't I just craft the arrow? Oh, uh, you know what? I crafted it too quickly. That's what happened. Dog on it. We're not gonna hang on to this stuff for for now. Yeah, I crafted it too quickly. That's right. We'll uh, we'll just find some more stone. It'd be nice to find a, a boulder, actually. I keep hitting hitting the F key. I've been playing a lot of Imperion Galactic Survival, which is another one of my favorite survival games. And in that game, you have to press F to activate stuff. So now my finger's trained to press the F key, so I have to get it, get it back on the E key here. I suppose I could change it in the settings, too, but... All right, let's go ahead and knock this boulder out really quick. Uh, I'm just going to harvest the whole thing. Uh, so that we have lots of lots of stone to start off with here. Excellent. Okay, so we have 65 stone. Uh, we're going to use those to make arrows, of course, but we're also going to use them uh, to help distract zombies when they start to spawn in. And, of course, use them for other things that we need stone for. All right, we need to find one more piece of cotton. Uh, let's actually finish out the quest, though. So we'll do uh, the wood frame block. And actually, I want to make about 20 of those. Uh, six. There we go. Set that down and upgrade it. Okay, and then it's going to want us to make a campfire, but we're going to wait until the quest tells us to do it so we so we actually get credit for it. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> oh, goodness. Oh, you know what I did? I made a freaking crossbow bolt, not an arrow. No wonder I didn't get credit for that. Ah, all right. Well, at least we understand what happened with that now. Uh, I thought I just had done it too soon, and it didn't give me credit for it. But that's not what what, what happened. No worries, no worries, not a big deal at all. Okay, let's get this uh, on there. And that takes care of our starting quest. Um, so now it gives us uh, the little yellow exclamation point. Oh, that's a new thing also here in Alpha 12, or uh, Alpha 12, that's Imperion. Alpha 19 is we now have the actual quest markers uh, showing up as icons on the map. Uh, super useful, actually. Super useful, and I believe we can turn that off if we want to. But we'll leave it on for now. Okay, so the quest is done. Now we have four points we have to spend, but before we do that, I want to uh, do a couple other things. I want to make myself a couple of stone spears. Actually, let's make three stone spears. 
And um, I want to put... Here, let's keep the water in our inventory. I want to have these two blocks on our toolbar. And you'll see why uh, here pretty soon if you don't already understand what I'm going to do with that uh, when the Zekers come in. And so, okay, so we got the spears. Uh, we're, we're not going to use the club. I wonder if I should try the club, though. Let's... Nah. Nah, let's not do the club for now. We're going to always make another one later if we want to. Uh, what we are going to do, though... Is we're going to make a couple of st uh, stone spears like we've done, and we're also going to make ourselves a stone sledgehammer. So what do we need for this? We need um, more plant fiber. Okay, so let's get some more plant fiber real quick. Okay, so we got the sledge. Now, whether we ultimately use the sledge as our main melee weapon or not, I haven't decided that yet, but we're going to use it for now in the very early game because it's just its so useful uh, for early game melee. One of the reasons why it's useful is, well, there's two reasons. First of all, it has um, a stun effect uh, and can knock zombies on their ass, which is really useful. And secondly, um, it doesn't use a lot of stamina. stamina. Uh, the stone sledge doesn't use a whole lot of stamina, so we can get quite a few s swings in. So the last thing I want to do before we stop and take a look at our points, I want to find one more thing of cotton. There's a POI over there. Um, and make our bandana. And then we should be in pretty good shape to get started. We got 125 pieces of wood, so we're doing good there. Doing good there. We just need to find another thing of cotton. Looks like there's some over this way. I just want to be careful. Uh, about the zombies. Remember, we are playing on insane, so the zombies run at top speed at all times. Doesn't matter if it's day or night. And so, if one of them catches us in the very early game and we're not prepared, we're we're gonna die. It's guaranteed. So we gotta be really careful here. Gotta be really careful. It's kind of slow going in the in the early game because of those reasons too, but. You know, the, the cool thing about it is it's it's a lot more intense. And so, you know, it's, it's a bit of a trade-off, I guess. All right, let's make our... Um... Oh, we need four pieces of cloth. Okay, no worries. In fact, I might actually harvest a little bit more of this even so that we can make some normal bandages. I wonder, though, do the normal bandages still stop bleeding? They, uh, they probably do. They probably do. Uh, all right, let's turn this into cloth. I uh, normally release videos on my channel at 8 a.m. Mountain Time each day. Uh, this one I'm going to put out today, though, just because, you know, it just dropped. Uh, but then... I'll, uh, I might do a second or a third episode uh, for today. Depends upon how time goes. I got some things I have to handle in real life. Um, but if not, definitely, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have an episode out tomorrow at 8 a.m. too. Okay, so we're making the bandana. And let's look at this for a second. Okay, st it still does stop bleeding. So I want to have a few of those on hand too. Let's put that on. I'm not going to carry the paper for now. I mean, we could sell it, I suppose. No, no, no sell price. Yeah, you have to have 10, I think, to sell it. Kind of nice that we found the hunting knife right away. This has a new model, too. Let's look at that really quick. Yep, there it is. Looks like a, like a, uh, uh, uh what, whatchamacallit? Uh, like a Gerber kind of knife? Well, Gerber, I think, is a brand, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, I love it. Love it, love it. Um, let's see. I'm not going to. Yeah, let's keep the spear on our uh, toolbar, and let's load up this guy, too. We do need to uh, make some more arrows, but we need to... I thought I heard a zombie. We need to find uh, some more feathers for that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start working towards the trader, I think. We could take a peek at this POI. Uh, one of the things they said in the patch notes is that they're adding more what they call remnant... Uh, POIs to the game, meaning that um, they have fewer enemies, so, you know, in the very early game you can still go in and do some looting. I'm not sure that this is one of them, though. This one could be an actual dungeon house. It might not be. I mean, it's in pretty rough shape, isn't it? 
And we also need to take care of our... Uh, whenever I see a doghouse, that sometimes means there's a dog around, so we got to be careful about those guys. Animals have been buffed in the game. They're a little bit stronger now, um, overall. Uh, zombies and animals can swim now, uh, so you're no longer safe going into the water. So that's something. Okay, what we're going to do, guys, is let's start moving towards the trader, but what I want to do is we got to do our points. So let's just kind of hunker down here for a second and see uh, how we're gonna how we're gonna distribute those points. All right. So normally, what I would do in uh, the very you know very beginning game on Insane Nightmare is I take the first point in uh, from the shadows, uh, and what that does is it basically helps us hide thirteen percent better ish, uh, and this really does in fact help because in the very early game, you you want to avoid fights if you can help it. You don't want to go looking for fights. And so if we can, you know, stay stealthy and avoid uh, many of the zombies until we're ready to take them on, this does help towards that. But let's not take it quite yet. I just want to look at a couple of other things too. Now, one one thing we could do is we could uh, put some points into intellect uh, or at least in advanced engineering so we can get the forge, forge off the bat. The thing about that though is that the trader could have a working forge or we could come across the schematic early on. So I think I'm going to hold off on that too. What I am going to do for sure is I'm going to take Skull Crusher because remember we have our sledgehammer uh, and so we'll have, we'll be able to use that right away. I think I'm also going to take, um, where is Master Chef? We're going to take the first point in Master Chef so we can make the teas and the bacon and eggs right off the bat and and we don't got to mess with that and that'll hold, hold us uh, you know I I never put more than one point in this in in the entire time playing through Alpha 18 I just only put the first point in here because you 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 know you end up finding the schematics for most if not all of the good dishes so I just don't do it I know there's other benefits too but yeah that's all we're going to do Okay so we got Skull Crusher we have Master Chef I'm going to go ahead and just go with From the Shadows. I think we should do that. And that leaves us one more point. So what do we want to put that point into? We could put it into Archery. We could put it into Javelin Master because we are going to also use the Spear. Um, or uh, they separated Lucky Looter and Treasure Hunter too, so that's another change. Uh, we could put a point in Lucky Looter. That would kind of make sense too. Archery would kind of make sense because we will use our bow a little bit. Um, and so would Miner 69er because this is going to allow us to make iron tools and also break blocks faster when we're trying to break into places. So there's a lot of good options. It's just a matter of which one should we take. I usually hold off on taking any of the gun skills until we find a gun. And then based upon the type of gun that we find, um, we don't do that. Now, here's another thing, though. We could... Um, if we took this and we, we could make a blunderbuss. Let's look at that really quick. So if, if we made a, a blunderbuss and we took that first point in shotgun, you know, then we'd be ju just that much stronger. I don't know though. I, I, I don't know. That's maybe not the best choice right at the moment. I'm kind of leaning towards either Javelin Master, Lucky Looter, or, um, or archery those are the those are the ones i'm kind of leaning towards right now and we you know a bird in the hand and all that right we can do archery right now we can do javelin master right now but we are going to start looting too so geez it's just hard to decide really um so i'm going to use i'm going to rely upon spears early on um so let's take that not maybe not for the long term but uh, early on uh, another thing about the looting in the game too is that you know they've kind of they've kind of scaled that so looting is going to be more appropriate to your game stage and so you're not going to find like really really good high-end stuff or even probably mid-grade stuff in the very very early game you know what i don't actually need to harvest that because we have a knife usually i harvest the, that to make the bone shiv uh, so in the interest of inventory space let's get rid of that stuff all right, I think we're ready to go. It is 11.41 in the morning. 
we're going to stay on the road. The bunny saw us and work our way towards the trader. I would really like to know if the trader is going to have um, a working forge uh, or a working workbench. Oh, yeah, the drop on this bow is terrible. Absolutely atrocious. There we go. All right, we got our first kill. Let's put this on our toolbar here. Ooh, they've slowed this down. It's almost like you're you're cutting into it and then you're slicing, which is realistic. The attack on it's pretty fast though. What do we want to put in this slot here? I'm thinking let's put the bedroll so if we get in trouble we can plop this down um, and set ourselves a spawn point. Yeah, that's what we'll do. All right, let's move out. Let's not worry about looting at POIs right now, guys. Let's just get to the trader and assess the situation with the crafting stations before we make any other moves. Okay, sound good? Let's do it. I hear they go hitting the damn F key again. It is noon. Does that mean the Zekers are going to come out, or is the game still going to wait till 2 p.m., which is what I've usually seen it do? It does really look nice. Just a little bit nicer overall than it did in Alpha 18. <clears throat> and so far, performance seems good. I have ultra settings on everything except for we turned off motion blur. And I also have the dynamic resolution thingamadoodle turned on too. Okay, well, let's just move. It's nice to not be freezing our nuts off. My last uh, series that I did on Alpha 18 was a snow biome playthrough. And one of the things that we did is as soon as we spawned in, I, I disabled elemental protection. Uh, so we had to contend with the cold right off the bat. And it was a challenge for sure, but it was a lot of fun too. All right. Animals are supposed to be a little tougher. So let's just see how many shots it's going to take to kill this deer whilst we continue to work our way towards the trader. Oh, got zombies. Okay, that's Edgar. Edgar looks different now. He's been updated. Um, he's probably still as tough as he's always been, is my guess. I suppose we could uh, test that theory, huh? Okay, he's going to see us here any second. Boy, I hope this still works too. It just occurred to me, but maybe it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Edgar. You sure look good. Not really, though. You look terrible. Yeah, he still appears to be hitting the land claim block and not the not the block below. So it's, it looks like this trick is still going to work for us. Okay, when he's down, we should throw a spear at him. And then just keep whacking him with this. It takes a little while to kill him, because remember, we're also playing on insane, so the zombies are like four times tougher than they normally would be. And we still get 750 XP for killing Edgar. Okay, so that none of that has changed. So the reason I did this, for those of you who have not seen this little technique before, um, this thing is 7,000 hit points, and it's really cheap to make. Well, I'm assuming it's still really cheap to make. Let's make sure it is. Yep, it's only five stone. Um, and so that's basically what you can do uh, in the, the early game to, to contend with the zombies, because if Edgar would have caught me um, out there, uh, just on foot, he would have killed me. There's no way I would have been able to take him out because I just don't have the firepower, um, you know, the damage yet to do that. And, you know, he's going to be fast and he's going to be hitting me like a freight train. So this is really the only way you can you can do this, or at least I wouldn't say the only way, but it's the, the best way I have found uh, to get started on insane nightmare speed. <laughs> that arrow was, that was, the drop on this is just pathetic. Anyway, okay, so we got um, zombie, is that zombie Joe over there? And then we have another Zeker right in our pathway to the trader. However, the trader's right there. Cool. Okay, well, here, let's do this. Let's do this. We might as well kill a couple more Zekers while we're here and we have this set up because we'll get some XP for it. So let's see if we can get uh, cheerleaders attention here 
And then we, we got that dude over there too. I'm not actually I'm not gonna worry about the deer for the moment, because we gotta we gotta deal with the zomb zombos first. Okay. Alright, come on, lady. Ah, <laughs> look at that. Our from the shadow stealth is working in our favor. Okay, let's pop her again. Over here. Oh, we knocked her down. How about that? Come get me. Okay. Hold still so I can hit you in the head. There we go. So we still get the 413 XP for the normal Zeeks. Why 413? That seems like a weird number. But that's the way it's been for a while. Can we hail Mary this guy? I doubt it. No. <laughs> That's way too far away. Way too far away. Okay, let's get our our arrows back off of a uh, cheerleader here. We're going to keep this little station set up here for now. Um and it it'll be good for us to use until we set the next land claim block down and then that one will become destroyed. So if you're going to do this uh and you want to set up a, a more permanent uh little, you know, little outpost or whatever you want to call that, uh, it's best to make that make those out of cobblestone. So yeah, this is only a one-time use. We could try and kill this guy if he if he keeps coming this way. Oh wow! Look at that shot. <laughs> Come here, sucker. I got a sledgehammer sandwich for you, dude. Yeah, this guy definitely looks a little bit different. Which zombie is that? I'm, I'm gonna have to to look in the the spawn menu to see which one that is. I don't recognize him at all. He's new, totally new looking. He looks like freaking uh, Ronald McDonald, zombie Ronald McDonald. Okay, can we tag that rabbit from here? No. Uh. Oh, we got another Zeker too. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Let's let's just get to the trader because we're we're running out of time in this episode. I'm gonna keep that there in case we have to quickly run back, but hopefully we can get into the trader before that happens. The traders. Oh, the other thing too is the traders are now. Uh, or can be in the towns and the cities now, which is awesome. They're not like way out in the boondocks. By the time I get my finger used to using the E key, I'm then going to go back to Imperion, and then I'm going to have the same damn problem in Imperion again. <laughs> okay, looks like we're good to go. And I believe this is Trader Jin, and she has finally been updated to have a female voice. And she has oh, a new model. A sight for sore eyes? Look at you! You're looking what good, ex get you? except for you need to wash your shirt. It's got blood on it. Okay, let's uh, let's check the stations. So we have a destroyed cement mixer, but do we have a schematic? We do not. Doggone it. Okay. <clears throat> let's take a look at the Kim Bench. Kim Bench is also destroyed. Um, and it does not have a schematic. Darn it. Okay. Let's try the workbench. Workbench is also destroyed. Oh, man. So, have they changed that? Oh, here's another thing. Did you guys notice how when I walked in here, the, the lighting changed? That, that's a new thing, too. So, the lighting changes in the building, so it's a little, little darker. Um, awesome change. Okay. Uh, let's try the forge. Oh, man. Total strikeout here. Total strikeout. Okay, well, what that means then, beds are new too. What that means then, guys, is we're, we're probably going to take uh, our next point. We're probably going to take that in uh, engineering uh, so we can make our first forge. Because, you know, we really need that first almost before anything else. Let's talk to Trader Jin here, and then we need to wrap up this episode. Oh, 
and it kind of zooms us in too. She looks really good. She actually looks a little bit too good for the zombie apocalypse. All right, um, let's take a look at your inventory. I have no use for this right now, and I have no room to hang on to it. So we're gonna sell that, get a little coin. Same thing here. Um, and anything else we want to sell to her right at the moment? Yeah, let's sell this again. We just there's nothing we can do with that right now, and I don't have enough space to hang on to it until we get a base going. Um, let's put that down there and let's just take a quick look and see what she has in here. She does have a pistol. We could earn enough money to buy that if we don't come across one. That's probably about the only thing there that we could potentially afford. What about a shotgun? Nah, a green pistol is probably a little bit out of our reach this early on. So yeah, that's pretty much it for... She's got a beaker, relatively cheap. Um, do, 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 do. Clothing, clothing, let's look at clothing. Yeah, nothing, nothing real fantastic, unfortunately, uh, for now. I would maybe consider that Stay orange, safe out there. you too, uh, that orange piss. Oh, we were going to take a job from her too. Um, let's see, I want to... I want to take a fetch quest, and this one's the closest. I would love to give you a job. Okay, be careful and try not to get yourself killed. <laughs> I like her. She's awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, let's take a fetch quest. She didn't have any buried treasure quest A and B. They're actually quite dangerous to do on insane nightmare speed because if you guys, you guys probably already know this, but uh, what will happen is they will spawn in, uh, you know, four or five zombies when you open the treasure. And in, on nightmare speed, they run at you. So, yeah, real dangerous to do until you have a, a way to get away from them. Anyway, uh, candy is new in the game, so we have various different types of candies that give us different types of buffs for five minutes. So that's cool. I'm sure we'll be finding that stuff in loot. I'm not going to buy it right now. Uh, we'll just buy that food. Okay, guys, we are um, a little bit over time, but that's okay uh, for our first episode. What I'm going to do is um, in the next episode... We're going to go straight for our quest location. We still have a, a decent amount of daylight left. Um, I hear a zombie. Um, we have a decent amount of daylight left, so we'll go do that quest next and then you know, just kind of see where things take us. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out a video, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.